So now we're going to look at how we know whether or not a precipitate will form when we combine two solutions. Uh, we did this back when we were talking about equilibrium constants. We calculated Q and we just compared it to the equilibrium constant to decide whether or not the reaction was at equilibrium and which way it would shift. So a similar idea here, uh, we're going to calculate Q. All right. So for instance, let's say we have uh, the reaction PbCl2 breaks into Pb2+, and 2Cl-. Q for this is the same as Ksp. All right, so the concentration of Pb2 plus times the concentration of Cl minus squared. And then what we do is we compare Q to the Ksp. So your Ksp will be given, you know, or you can find it in a table. And then if Q is greater than Ksp, you get a precipitate. If Q is less than Ksp, there's no precipitate. So Q is the exact same thing as Ksp, except for conditions where we don't know if we're at equilibrium. Okay, so, so let's look at a reaction where we take some sodium chromate. So we have some sodium, some, stront, some strontium ion. Okay, so let's see. To start with, I have the strontium ion concentration of 0 0.006. And then I'm going to add some um, sodium chromate so that the chromate concentration becomes 0 0.0030. Now it's really tempting to write a reaction for uh, chromate plus strontium gives you strontium chromate. But remember, when we do this, we always start with the solid and we break it up into its ions. Okay, uh, and the reason for that is that's where we get our Ksp or Q expression. So for this, I'm going to write Q is a concentration of strontium ion, just like I would for Ksp, times chromate. And then I'm going to plug in my numbers. Okay, so the strontium is 0 0.006, and the chromate is 0 0.003, and I get Q equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay, and then I go back and I look and I find the Ksp for strontium chromate in the book, and that's going to be 3.6 times 10 to the minus 5. So I look at that and I say Q is less than Ksp, so I get no precipitate. Okay? So before we do the next question, just a little reminder, because we haven't talked very much about solutions this year. When we dilute a solution, okay, so if I add one solution to another, it, it gets diluted because the volume increases. So you may remember this equation, hopefully. M1V1 equals M2V2. Those are your molarities and your volumes. So when I add a solution to a new solution, I need to find its new molarity by taking its original molarity and multiplying by the original volume over the total volume. So we'll see how we can put that to work in the next slide. So will a precipitate of strontium chromate form if 0.2 liters of the strontium nitrate is mixed with 0.8 liters of 0.04 molar potassium chromate? So first thing I want to do is find my concentrations. So the concentration of strontium is the 0 0.006 molar, right, times its volume over the new volume, which is now 1 liter, okay, because 0.2 and 0.8 gives me 1. So you can see that this is going to be diluted. So the new concentration of strontium is going to be 0 0.0012 molar because they have the same amount of strontium but in a larger volume. So we'll do the same thing for the chromate. Okay, so we take its original concentration, 0.04, okay, um, and I multiply by its volume over the new or total volume, and the new concentration becomes 0 0.032 molar. Okay, so now again I'm going to go ahead and fill in my Q expression, which is the strontium times the chromate. So 0 0.0012 times 0 0.032. Okay, and Q comes out to be, uh, let's see, what does 3.8 times 10 to the minus 5. 
times 10 to the minus 5. Okay, and remember that KSP, we just saw in the last problem, we looked it up, is 3.6 times 10 to the minus 5. So in this case, Q is larger than KSP, not by much, okay? So we're going to see a precipitate, though. Just a little bit of precipitate will form because the Q is a little bigger than the KSP. Okay, so we'll try another problem now. I have a saturated solution of magnesium fluoride, and I've got a concentration right here of the magnesium ion. And then I've got my equation. It says write the expression for the KSP and calculate its volume at 18 degrees. So, simple enough, right? KSP is a concentration of magnesium ion times the concentration of fluoride ion squared. Okay, so I know I'm given that the concentration of magnesium ion is 1.21 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. So then what's the concentration of the fluoride ion? Because it's not given. Well, when I dissolve magnesium fluoride, I get one magnesium and two fluorides. So the concentration of fluoride here is just twice. So it's going to be 2.42 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. Okay. Remember, it's a, two, it's a 1 to 2 ratio here. So I'll get twice the concentration of the fluoride. And then I just go ahead and I plug it into my KSP expression. Okay, so I've got 1.21 times 10 to the minus 3 times 2.42 times 10 to the minus 3. And the formula says to square it. So if we do all that out, we get 7.09 times 10 to the minus 9. So that's our KSP, and we'll use that moving forward in this problem. So we're going to calculate the concentration of magnesium ion in some saturated magnesium fluoride, to which I've added 0.1 mole of fluoride. So this is one of those common ion. Okay, I'm adding a common ion. So if I look at the original equation, right, magnesium fluoride breaks into magnesium ion and a couple of fluorides. Okay, so um, we're going to start with x of this and 2x of that, but not just 2x, it says I'm going to add 0.1 moles in 1 liter, so it's that plus 0.1. That makes sense? So I've got my magnesium is my x, 2x for fluoride plus the 0.1 that I've added in there. So now I know the KSP from last part of the problem, 7.09 times 10 to the minus 9 equals x times 2x plus 0.1. And remember, we're going to go ahead and assume now, right, that 2x is much, much smaller than 0.1. So 7.09 times 10 to the minus 10 is x times 0.1, and I don't think I wrote the squared there, squared, okay, so that's going to come out to be x is 7.09 times 10 to the minus 7 molar, okay, and that will be the concentration of the magnesium ion, because that's our x, all right. Now we're going to predict whether or not a precipitate will form if I take 100 milliliters of point, that's 0 0.003 molar magnesium nitrate and 200 milliliters of 0 0.003 molar sodium fluoride. So again, let's find our new concentrations because when I add these two together, they're going to dilute each other. So the concentration of magnesium ion, right, is going to be this 0 0.003 times 100 milliliters over my new total, which is 300, okay, because 200 plus 100. So this would be 0 0.001 molar magnesium. And then the concentration of the fluoride is the 0 0.002 times 200. That's its original volume, over 300 milliliters. So that's going to be 0 
00133 molar. So then we go ahead and we plug in Q, which is the concentration of magnesium ion times fluoride ion squared. Okay, so that's going to be 0.001 times 0.0133 is another zero in there, squared. And Q will come out to be 1.77 times 10 to the minus 9. Okay, and remember KSP, right, was 7.09 times 10 to the minus 9. So Q is less than KSP, so I get no precipitate. All right. So here's a question that's a little more complicated, but I figured we'd just throw it in there. What happens if I raise the temperature? Okay, I'm going to raise the temperature from the original that was 18 up to 27. And I'm going to discover that the concentration of magnesium is 0.117 times 10 to the minus 3. So if I increase the temperature, I'm just summarizing the data here, I've decreased the concentration of magnesium from 0.0. 00121 to 0.00117. That was sort of given in the beginning of the problem, and this is given in this part. So what does that mean? It, what does it mean if increasing the temperature decreases the concentration? Well, it means that I'm shifting my reaction back to the left. Okay, Increasing the temperature would shift it to left if the heat were on what side? Well, the heat's over here. So you remember Le Chatelier's principle? When I go ahead and increase right here, I make this bigger, it shifts it left. So the question is, is it endothermic or exothermic? And we can actually tell that this particular reaction is exothermic. And that is that.